everyone. We're at Computex 2018, looking at one of the first things we've seen at the show. So this is really cool. Last year we spoke with Kingpin at the EVGA headquarters, and we're back now talking about something that at that time wasn't done yet. But this is a hybrid, sort of closed loop-ish solution for liquid nitrogen cooling, where basically we've got two tanks on either side of this system, and it's feeding in. So there's a CPU block and a GPU block, and same idea as open loop water cooling, except it's liquid nitrogen. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, pretty cool for overclock. And as I understand it, Kingpin's actually using this for his real benchmarking. So this isn't just a show system, it's the real thing. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzlies High End Thermal Paste and Liquid Metal. Thermal Grizzlies Cryonaut is an affordable, high quality thermal compound that doesn't face some of the aging limitations of other pastes on the market. Cryonaut has a thermal conductivity of 12.5 watts per meter Kelvin, focuses on endurance, is easy to spread, and isn't electrically conductive, making it safe to use on GPU dyes. Thermal Grizzly also makes conductor not liquid metal, which we've used to drop 20 degrees off some temperatures in our delitted tests. Buy a tube at the link in the description below. So I'll walk you through it. Basically, on this side, we have an input tank. So this is where all the LN2 is coming from right now. There's a, a stainless steel hose on the back side, feeds in through up here at an intake manifold, and then that is split between uh, two valves, one for the CPU, one for the GPU, and those are controlled based on two things as well. One of them is current, so we'll look at the 12 volt line and see how much current's being pushed. So if, for example, you start a benchmark and it starts pushing a lot of current before there's actually any temperature buildup, you'll get an instant response or near instant with low latency versus typically if you're reading something like a socket temperature, which this is with a K-type thermocouple, which we'll talk about in a moment, uh, those take a little while to heat up because it's a copper block, needs to actually have some heat to sink first. Uh, so if it detects a high current load, the valve can open up sooner and try and achieve a target temperature. And that's the next big thing with this. The temperature target is set via software and there is a controller in the backside of this case that we have a shot of, which is hooked up via K-type thermocouples. Uh, so you could set X degrees Celsius and then it will try to achieve that. And as I understand it, achieves it pretty quickly, typically within 20 seconds or so, depending on how low you set it, uh, as opposed to pouring it manually where you're trying to achieve maybe full pot or something like that for LN2. So that's the basics. Now, uh, you have, as I said, with the valves, you have a current control and a temperature control based on the thermocouples and the sockets. The CPU valve comes in through here onto the X299 CPU. It's on currently the EVGA Dark Motherboard, actually one of the boards that we liked a lot for overclocking. So it feeds into a block. And this is kind of, it's, it's a very large block on top of the CPU, so you can think of it as a uh, truncated LN2 pot, except on the top there's a copper plate and then internally there are channels. So it's actually got, it's not like micro fins, but it does have channels for the LN2 to flow through and do some cooling. And of course, when you're talking LN2 cooling, so at some point things like micro fins probably don't matter a whole lot anyway. It's not like we're working with water here. As it goes through, it comes out and goes out through the uh, exit manifold and then comes back into the other tank on this side over here behind me where some of the LN2 can be reclaimed, uh, some of it may be gas, it just kind of depends on if, for example, this entire system is frozen over, like they're pushing really hard, then you'll be able to reclaim more of the LN2, more of it will stay in liquid form, less phase change going on, uh, whereas right now when it's idling, it's probably a bit more burning off. So as I understand it, when this stuff moves over to the other tank, Kingpin's able to reclaim something like 75% in a good case scenario of the LN2. So there's actually some recycling of LN2 going on. And more importantly, it's just way more efficient to work with than standing there manually for hours pouring LN2 thermoses over and over and over. So that's the, I think that's the basics of it. A couple more things here. This is a Titan V card. It's got a GPU block on it. Similar idea to this where it's a custom, I guess, machined or CNC block, uh, copper, and it's got some channels in it as well. And then for everything else, it's stainless steel hoses with just insulation on it. And you'll see some foam buildup in some places as the temperature drops. Right now, it's running pretty conservatively because otherwise it gets a bit loud for video. A couple other things here for the components. They've got a 7980XE, which I know is a, a meme with our audience. But 7980XE, this gets pushed up to about 5.7 when they're actually trying for frequencies. So 5.7 gigahertz here. The GPU, as the Titan V has noted, it's been modded a bit. Uh, and it can get up to something like 2300 megahertz. I think saying modded a bit maybe is a bit of an understatement, but uh, a couple of mods on there. <laughs> and uh, 2300 megahertz, HBM2, from what I understand, doesn't push quite as hard. It's, it's a bit of a different beast. Uh, so that's, I think that's the basics for you. As noted, controller on the backside, 
talks to software on a laptop via Wi-Fi or wireless. And I think that's all done through Raspberry Pi and some custom Python program as well. So on the front, there's a relay. This is being fed by Raspberry Pi via 5 volt. And that's what's controlling the valves as well. And we might have some audio of this, or you might be able to hear it while I'm talking about. There's clicking every now and then. That's when the valves are opening and closing based on whatever the software is set up to. Uh, so I think EVGA, by the time this video goes live, will have done a live stream with this system. You can probably see more there in terms of uh, results and actually pushing it. Right now, it's more or less just in showroom state. But that's it for this one. So uh, they call it the RoboClocker. We'll probably have an article on it. You can click that in the link in the description below. As always, go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. It helps out directly with these trips. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.